Christianity first took root on lands that are today Romania, as far back as Roman times, after the defeat of Dacia by Traian in the year 106 AD. Brothers Cyril and Methodius also passed this way. In 1700, in response to a proposal by Emperor Leopold Habsburg, 54 high priests of the Orthodox Church in Transylvania signed an act of union with Rome on behalf of 1,500 priests and 200,000 faithful. They accepted the Pope's supremacy and the Catholic doctrine whilst keeping the Byzantine rite and thereby became the Greek Catholic Church. Two hundred and fifty years later, they paid a high price for unity with Rome. Following Transylvania's incorporation into Romania in 1918, the Greek Catholic Church became the biggest and most vigorous religious community in that area. Before the Second World War, the church had five dioceses, numbered over one and a half million faithful, 2,580 places of worship, and published 20 periodicals with a circulation of 250,000 copies. Over 800,000 members of the laity were actively involved in the Catholic action movement. Towards the end of the Second World War, the eastern half of Europe saw communist governments take power. Of course, due to the external pressure exerted by the Red Army, but above all of the Soviet Union. In 1946, after rigged elections, Romania saw its first communist government installed. The times of communist dictatorship, with Gheorghiu Desh and later Nicolae Ceausescu, were amongst others characterized by the stifling of religious practices. The main thrust of this policy did not strike at the mainstream Orthodox Church, because although it did not avoid persecution, it had decided to reach a compromise and cooperate with the authorities. Relations with the Vatican were cut, the Roman Catholic Church, composed mainly of a Hungarian minority, was also tolerated. The biggest enemy proved to be the Greek Catholic Church. According to what I knew, the order came from Moscow to suppress these Byzantine Catholic churches, being considered as an, an anomaly uh, by the Russian people, and maybe also by the Russian Orthodox Church at that time, and they wanted them to go back to what they called the Mother Church. The media talked much about nationalism, that the Mother Church, the Orthodox Church, wants to lead to unity, call everyone to unite. We are all one nation, we must have one faith. We do not need three different faiths. They finally convened the so-called Synod. In October 1948, 36 ordinary Greek Catholic priests from Transylvania were gathered in the town of Cluj to sign a document on the strength of which the Greek Catholic Church was to return to the Orthodox Church. Mulțimea credincioșilor greco-catolici se desolidarizează de Biserica Romei. Legământul de revenire la Biserica Ortodoxă este primit de țăranii și intelectualii ardeleni. Parce que qu'est-ce qu'ils voulaient? Ils voulaient faire. Why? What did they want? They wanted to give the impression that a synod of the Greek Catholic Church had been convened and had recanted the decision of the synod of 1700. 
From the point of view of canon law, such a gathering is invalid. First of all, because there was no bishop present. A synod is a reunion of bishops. Donc, synod, c'est en en général la réunion des évêques. La București a avut loc ceremonia solemnă a revenirii bisericii greco-catolice la biserica ortodoxă. Un număr de 432 de delegați din Ardeal și Banat au semnat hotărârea prin care decid să rupă lecturile cu biserica Romei. Reprezentanții clerului subliniază importanța actului și adresează un apel către toți credincioșii greco-catolici cerându-le să urmeze pe păstorii lor sufletești. Donc, ils ont été they were brought to Bucharest in a special train to kiss the hand of the Patriarch as a sign of communion. They were then taken to Alba Iulia. Alba Iulia is a very important place for the Romanian people. It is there that the great reunion of the provinces of Romania and Transylvania took place. They wanted to give the whole event a symbolism that a great reunion of the Orthodox Church had taken place. A stone tablet exists there to this day, on which are inscribed the words, here came to pass the great reunion of the Orthodox Church. And to this day, some Orthodox celebrate this reunion there. Towards the end of October 1948, all of Romania's Greek Catholic bishops were arrested. They were taken to the Internal Affairs Ministry in Bucharest, and then a few days later to Dragoslavl, the summer residence of the Orthodox Patriarch. Communist propaganda proclaimed that the bishops had gone into a retreat. Evident, a fost duși fiecare pe rând la interrogatoriu, li s-a luat tot ce s-a... Of course, they were all interrogated. All the belongings they had brought with them were confiscated and they were treated like thieves and criminals. During such meetings, they were put under intense pressure to renounce their union with the Holy See and to unite with the Orthodox Church. The villa was surrounded by a barbed wire fence, whilst a military platoon prevented anyone from entering or leaving the building. In the meantime, the government administered its final blow with the publication on December 1st, 1948, of a final decree taking the Greek Catholic Church out from under Romanian law. The decree also claimed that all the faithful had returned to the Orthodox Church, which was not true. After uh, the bishops and the priests being arrested, the uh, communist regime tried to force the common people to sign different lists of becoming Orthodox. So in every village, uh, party activists and uh, security officers went uh, from house to house and uh, there were different tactics. A tactic was to lie and to tell people these are lists from, for receiving some uh, different things like sugar, for example, and many people did not know to read and they signed. There was a person who said, they came and said, 